Joining us now on set, Lydia Moynihan. She's New York Post, uh, Wall Street reporter. The, the actual business was down more than 26%, wasn't it? Like investment banking or something? Down like more than 40 More than 40 I believe. Somewhere between 40 and 50 All of this is obviously backwards looking. This is what happened in 2022, and it's kind of what we expected to see You said happen. this last time you were on. I exactly. Think. And there were, of course, all of these ripple effects that we also expected to see happen, right? We expected to see culling across the board. You know, Goldman Sachs, they called it David's demolition day, referencing David Solomon axing um, over two tranches, almost 10% of the workforce. Um, we saw the power shift from the employees who were just a few years earlier basically demanding we have Zoom free Fridays and that everyone gets a Peloton um, to then kind of dutifully filing back to the office. But I think the question now is, Who's going to be in the catbird seat and who's safe moving forward? And, and during a time like this, as we're seeing Silicon Valley Bank, as we're seeing all of these bank failures, people in that restructuring space, they're going to be the winners here. And so we're seeing that we're actively recruiting for those people. I want to note, during the financial crisis, even after Lehman failed, in the couple years after alone, people who were managing their wealth, helping with that restructuring, they made a billion dollars in fees in just the first two years. So there's always money to be made in any environment, and I think that's where we're going to see this people is, raking this in is, the money. This only goes back to 2009, so it goes back to pre-pandemic levels. So people were making hay during the pandemic, which is a little weird uh, in and of itself, but a lot, of deal, a lot of things were happening during the pandemic. And then what? You got Ukraine was invaded, and the Fed started raising rates, and those were probably the two of the biggest factors for, for things drying up in that business. I guess the, the bear market didn't help. Yeah, I think there were a lot of factors that precipitated that, but certainly the interest rates didn't help. And then deal making slowed down. Yeah. That was obviously why during the pandemic we saw so much activity. Everyone wanted to go public. There were so many SPACs. Um, and I think during this uncertainty, people are just kind of waiting to sit back and see what happens next before. The, the, Lydia, the bonus pool was big <clears throat> still. So that that's because when we just say, what is it, 126,000 was the average bonus? Is that that's the number? But what was the total? That they split it was like 33 billion or something. Yeah, and, it? and it's important to note, you know, anecdotally, we were hearing some of the junior bankers at a Goldman Sachs or Morgan Stanley. Some of those people were getting just 10 or 15 thousand dollars. But there's some so getting, still really getting shocking. a million and a half too, right? But you look at yes, the, or in the, the rainmakers. David Solomon, his pay decreased about a third, but he still got a 25 million dollar right. bonus. Right. What about a rainmaker in in bond trading or you know one of the things that you think investment banking? They're still getting a two or three million dollar bonus, aren't they? Absolutely. And actually, traders, um, their bonuses dipped a little bit as well, but. That was actually during some of the volatility. Those revenues were pretty consistent. Over when the last you year. when you talk about the junior people making ten or fifteen thousand dollars, some of them for the bonus and, and saying that's shocking. What did it used to be? It used to be at least about a hundred thousand. Used to be at least the same number as your base pay. And there was a lot of frustration even among partners that it's kind of embarrassing for them when you have young kids who are just trying to make ends meet in Manhattan who work hundred hour weeks right. throughout the entire year in the hopes that. At the end of the year, they'll be compensated for that work, and that was a real slap in the face. And I think that's been a huge, a huge risk for the firm too. Just dealing with people are, you know, much less motivated. Is, is that, a, is, that getting... a, is that a sign like we're not going to? We don't think of you too highly. You should go look for something somewhere else. We we won't actually fire you. We, but, yeah, yeah, I think we've spoken about uh, this as well, sort of firing by process. You know, obviously you were looking at that overall pool dip, and yet. Banks want to make sure that the most successful and the highest performers and the rainmakers are still compensated. Yep. And so I think that number on your check is a real indication of whether or not you're valued by the firm. Because when you have less money to go around, it's not like everyone gets a piece of the pie. It's high performers will still be rewarded, maybe a little bit less. Yep. But it's not going to be so, so everyone we've, gets a trophy. This we've year. heard it.